Welcome to the show, everyone. It's the Crypto Lark. Today, I want to talk about the use cases for blockchain technology. Now, this is not an exhaustive list of the use cases of blockchain technology, and certainly people are developing new use cases all the time, but these are some of the top use cases of blockchain before we get into that quick shout out as always to everyone who's been hitting that like button of course everyone who's been subscribing to the channel if you're not subscribed to the channel yet make sure you hit that button down below or the bell to stay up to date with all of the latest in the crypto space furthermore this is of course not professional financial advice this is just a dude talking about cryptocurrencies on the internet let's get into it guys the use cases for blockchain are many and varied blockchain offers an amazing potential because of its distributed ledger technology it's immutable and it's got a lot of very interesting applications the first one of course is the one we're probably all most familiar with payments bitcoin litecoin dash and others fulfill this in a great way this is especially important for things like cross-border remittances providing financial services to the under or the unbanked regions of the world. It's fast, much faster than traditional bank transfers, especially across borders. It's secure because of the networks that are running these digital currencies. And it's verifiable because it's on a public ledger. And the transaction fees are usually pretty low. Hopefully we won't see any big Bitcoin fees again in the future now that we have had the upgrades or are having the upgrades coming to the network. Another great use case is supply chain. Now we have some great projects working on that like Modem and Walton and VeChain amongst many others. This will let you have verifiable immutable data on the condition in which your goods are shipped. Very cool idea. Voting Horizon State, for example, is working on voting. This is not just country and municipal elections, but this is also corporate board voting, for example. This is unimaginably cheaper than the traditional way of voting. Not to mention, of course, that it's all verifiable on a public ledger. So you take away all that accusation of voter fraud content management now, this is a really interesting one music movies but also small creator content on youtube or um, other mediums i guess not particularly youtube in this situation but some of the new uh, competitors that are coming up like dtube it's censorship resistant it's also incentivized steam it or dtube for example you can actually get paid to post by being upvoted by other users Props is another form of that ecosystem where it's censorship resistant. Livetree Adept will be offering, for example, the ability to make a movie and then investors can share a percentage of the proceeds via smart contracts and you can have full control over the process, really overthrowing a lot of the traditional centralized options which we have already. The next one, data ownership. The ability to own your own data is quite revolutionary. Right now, your data gets accumulated by the giant tech players, Google, Facebook, YouTube, yes, I know. And that data gets sold, monetized. It's, it's very inefficient what's going on. That's perhaps one of the biggest takeaways here. But you also, without holding the ownership of your data, you can't monetize your data. They monetize your data, but you can't. Blockchain offers the potential to monetize the ownership of data. Quite a few projects are working on this. Pixio Chain, for example, is one upcoming project on the Neo blockchain. Digital assets. Now, digital assets is a very, very big thing as well. This is gaming, things like having certain swords or armor in certain games, ebooks unique things like crypto kitties or perhaps gifto and their digital gifts like the one million dollar rose that was sold now you can have your opinion on whether or not you think that's a good idea but the reality is people are using these 
and a lot of different companies are offering this. It's Gifto, it's Publica, it's Lastos, and many others are working on digital assets, digital identity, and passwords for that matter. Digital identity is a fantastic solution yet again. It's immutable, it's incorruptible. A digital ID which lives on the blockchain encrypted for your privacy so that you can have a KYC, for example, if you want to invest in an ICO. Someday, of course, we're even going to have our driver's licenses and passports all on the blockchain. Can't be stolen, can't be copied. Fantastic. Not to mention, of course, the possibility for having a blockchain-based password authentication system, much like what the guys over at Remy have done recently. The tokenization of real world assets. One of the things that comes straight to my mind is gold. Putting gold on the blockchain, using that as a tokenized asset. Someone like Digix Dow is doing this currently. Very cool idea, allows you to, for example, hedge versus the volatility of the cryptocurrency market, or of course, simply own a digital representation of gold verifiable on the blockchain, how much you own, where it is, and all that information. Next up, land, registry, and other public records like birth certificates, death certificates, etc. Land registry is a really big one because in a lot of countries, the current system of land registry is titles and deeds and papers sitting in filing cabinets somewhere terribly inefficient. Yes, people are trying to move to a centralized database, but centralized databases have inherent problems. Let's say that you are a rich person and you want to take a poor person's land. Well, you go and you pay a public official to alter the documents because it's all on a centralized server and that can be done. But with an immutable register, there is none of that malarkey going on. You can't alter these things. Once it has been put on the blockchain, it cannot be unwritten. For example, Zebi over in India is focusing on particularly the land registry issue right now. Health records. Now this is a private record. So I made a separate category from public records of this. Imagine if you are in an accident and you have uh, something in your phone, for example, or uh, some kind of digital ID which the doctors can scan, and then they'll know all of your health data so that they can know, well, he's allergic to this medicine we are about to give him, great, or he's got a particular disease that we need to be aware of, important stuff. It's universal, it's private, it's crisis ready, and of course, the ability to, again, have ownership of your health records, not for it to be in a centralized database somewhere waiting to get hacked basically. Energy trading, tokenized energy, the ability to easily swap energy around, invest in energy startups. This is a big use case right now for blockchain. We see a lot of companies coming in, Power Ledger and WePower, for example, not to mention a whole host of others which are entering the market at the moment. Privacy particularly private digital wealth transfers. Now this lets you send money without anyone knowing that you're doing it. Monero, Zcash, PIVX, actually PIVX is privacy optional. Some of these other ones are privacy all the time. Now, the opponents of these kind of coins will say drugs, crime, uh, terrorism, all the bad things in the book. Well, they mostly say that about Bitcoin, but certainly when it becomes obvious that Bitcoin isn't really being used for that, it'll move on to Monero and all the rest of the privacy coins. But it also lets you do things like tax evasion. <clears throat> Not saying you should do that. And of course, if you are more libertarian minded, maybe you just don't want someone to know what you're doing with your money. If you want to go down the street and buy some beer and your local beer shop accepts Monero, Great, go do that. Does the government need to know you bought a six pack of beer tonight? Maybe not. IOT, the internet of things. Machine to machine interactions, all these little micro transactions that have to be registered, that have to be 
verifiable. We have IOTA and IOT Chain and a host of others that are working on this at the moment. This is going to be really, really big. And this is smart cities, smart toasters, smart cars, all that stuff is coming. And blockchain can be a center of that, or at least uh, in, this, in this situation of, for example, IOTA, it's not blockchain, it's actually a, uh, a different form of distributed ledger, but nevertheless, that kind of technology can be very well utilized in this situation. Smart contracts, smart contracts, we all love smart contracts, don't we? Ethereum, Cardano, Icon, Qtum, and on and on go the list of smart contract platforms. Smart contracts are essentially automated contracts. If A happens, B gets done. This really is about contract enforcement. It's a fantastic technology that has been built on top of blockchain. It's public, it's verifiable. It happens because it's automated. Reputation, review, and rating management. We have a few projects like uh, Monitha and Qlink, for example. Well, one, one of the iterations of Qlink is working on this in particular, but the ability to have an immutable, verifiable system for e-commerce, for example, or for travel sites, real reviews from real people, real ratings, not fake reviews, not fake ratings, reputation that you can take anywhere with you on the internet. Imagine that. Imagine you are an eBay seller and you can't take that reputation to Alibaba. You can't take that reputation to anywhere else. It's stuck. It's on an island somewhere and you can't get it off. But if you had a decentralized version of reputation, wow, you could take your reputation with you anywhere. Your ratings with you can go anywhere. Now, some people might not like that if you have bad ratings and a bad reputation, but for the people who have good ratings and good reputation, let me tell you, they want to be able to utilize that. That is an asset. Rewards programs. This is getting money back. Now, one of the problems with rewards programs is that they tend to be very specific. You get um, a reward back from your local cafe. Well, it's only spendable at your local cafe. And yes, I understand that's the point to get you to come back to that local cafe, but it's not very useful. However, there are some rewards programs like LoyalCoin, for example, or even you might think of the uh, of Metal Pay and their cash back in cryptocurrency that they're going to be offering. That's pretty cool. Transparency. Now, this is one of the best use cases of blockchain technology. Transparency will let you see exactly what governments are doing, exactly what nonprofits are doing, how they're spending your money, for example. Blockchain and the transparency of blockchain offers can really help reduce corruption worldwide if leveraged properly, of course. Distributed storage course, the more secure than centralized databases. We all know they have problems. SIA and storage, for example, are both distributed storage um, projects. We also have incentivized distributed computing, Sonom, Deep Brain Chain, Golem, for example. They offer tokens in exchange for renting out your computing power to someone else who wants to use it. That, of course, has lots of applications like uh, digital rendering or machine learning. Borderless, transparent wealth management and investing. Now this is a really interesting one. People like Swiss Borg and Genesis Vision, Ethos uh, to an extent as well, are working on this. The, the investment and wealth management industry is something that has been non-transparent for a while. And of course it is very much hemmed in by where you are in the world. These decentralized solutions are offering the ability for people all around the world to be able to make use of wealth management tools, as well as to make use of investment tools that they have previously been excluded to. Crowdfunding. Now, ICOs are probably the biggest iteration of blockchain-based crowdfunding. They have completely skipped over traditional VC uh, avenues, and yes, the venture capital funds have caught up to this, and they are now in being involved quite heavily in a lot of ICOs. 
That being said, is not just about ICOs. It's also about um, projects like, for example, the Acorn Collective, which are offering decentralized solutions for crowdfunding to, again, offer lower fees, be more borderless, etc. And finally, the decentralized internet. Nexus, Skycoin, Substratum, amongst others, are all working on decentralizing the internet. And this is a huge one. You might think, well, why does the internet need to be decentralized? Because it is centralized. That's the problem. You have censorship happening already. Net neutrality is being eroded globally. But a decentralized internet is incentivized, it's immutable, it's unstoppable, and it's censorship resistant. This is going to be very important moving forward as we've already seen governments coming out against the internet, against freedom of information, and against freedom of financial mobility. Anyway, these are just some of the use cases of blockchain technology. It is fantastic and it's absolutely something that if you're not aware of it yet or if you're not looking into it very much yet, find out some of the use cases. These are There are many more that I haven't even mentioned here today. Let me know what you guys think. If I missed something important, hit me up in the comment section down below. Long live the blockchain and peace out till next time.